Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are gonna talk about some hard surface stuff. Mm. We did a little bit last week, and so we, we had a lot of requests for doing more stuff, especially when it comes to inserts and meshes. So today we're just gonna cover how to make different inserts of different sizes with different spans in a cylinder. Because mm. a cylinder is a really nice sort of curved surface that that's the, the kind of curved surface that always is an issue whenever you need to do any sort of cut-ins. So um, one thing that I want to mention with any sort of hard surface, at least from my point of view, is that it, it makes it a lot easier if you plan ahead. If you plan ahead how many spans you want to have or how many edges and loops you want to have, that makes it a lot easier when you need to do inserts or extrusions that sort of like conform to the surface properly. So anything to the power of 2, 8, 16, 32, 64, that kind of stuff makes it a lot easier. And if you don't plan it, you're going to realize pretty quickly why you should plan it. Yeah. it, it everything is just so much harder. Uh, if you plan it, it's kind of like a like a puzzle piece where everything just kind of flows together. If you don't plan it, it's like you kind of got to attach things to the puzzle piece. You got to yeah. cut stuff off it and it's miserable. So obviously, all of these things aren't really an issue if you have a flat surface. Mm. But curved surfaces, that's where it starts to get hard. This is, it sounds a bit like a boring topic when you're like, oh, it's we're gonna insert stuff in the cylinders. <laughs> but this is really one, one of the foundational things you gotta learn about hard surface modeling. Uh, inserting cylinders into things and inserting shapes into other shapes. It's something yeah. you do so often. So we're starting off with just a cylinder here that's 32, that has 32 segments. And the first one that I'll cut into here is gonna be a smaller one that has eight um, eight subdivisions. So th these one, like one that has eight is a lot more simple than one that would have 16 because mm. you just need a lot, like a fewer cuts. So usually what I do is I just place my cylinder where I want my cut to be. Um, what you could do to make it easier, let's just do that here. It's just to scale this so it sort of roughly matches the first, first three loops here. Um, obviously, if you wanted it bigger, you would just have to expand that, but we can talk about that once we get to the 16 one. So by positioning a cylinder where you want your cuts, it's just, it makes it really easy to conform your cuts because now yeah. you can see, okay, to make a perfect circle, I would just have to cut in these places right there. So that, that makes it really simple. This is also where some people actually use Booleans for this, mm. but uh, that, which, which is a legit way of doing, but there's a lot of cleanup for it. Yeah. Booleans have got a lot better recently, but it's still a lot of cleanup. So I just, like it's like with everything I do when I model or make anything is I try to not to be not to be too perfect mm. just because I don't like if I if I'm slightly imperfect then my things will also look look slightly imperfect and I think it's just it just looks nicer that way. Um, so what I usually do is I just uh, there's no reason to be conservative with your with your loops here. You can always take them away again. Yeah. Um, so I just go in. So one thing you could do is. Um, you could take your edges here, for example, and then by snapping, you know, holding down the V key in Maya, you could sort of snap it, but snap it to this axis here. That way you ensure that it's perfect on the yeah. on the cylinder. Like I'm not necessarily looking to do that because I don't really want this to be super perfect, but that's something I have done in the past and you, you, you can do that as well. Yeah, in a lot of cases you do want this to be mathematically perfect. Yeah. And, and then it's handy. An important thing to note here is that um, if we were to cut in, so let's let's make some cuts here now based on this little thing here. So if I just cut up here now, cut to there. Just using the multi cut tool. Yeah. Cut to there and cut to there. So I'm just clicking roughly, you know, where the cuts should be there. Oh, I think I'm missing one. Yeah. Yeah, you can hit the control one key just to isolate like you're doing now. Yeah. I've set it up to a hotkey that's my hotkey is all Q because it's more comfortable mm. than control. Yeah, control one, one is, a, is a bullshit hotkey. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just really, it's just really annoying to actually so here, have to do. So here we would have, you know, a, a great cut for um, a cylinder. The problem is, let's say this is the size of the cylinder or the size of the insert that we want. Uh, the issue that we're going to run into now, you can hold down tab to sort of paint selections. The issue that we're going to run into now, oops, is once I, Let's say if I just delete this, all right? And I wanted to, you know, now it looks fine and we wanted to extrude this in. 
Now we don't have any supporting edges here. So the supporting edges that I'm talking about are supporting it is just around the outside. So once we start to subdivide, we end up with a mess like this, so we can't really get any hard yeah. edges. You know, you can try and remedy it by going in here and subdividing again, but you don't get the support on the outside. This is less of a problem when you have less spans like this or less fewer edges. But you can see that there's inconsistencies between the lengths uh, on the cylinder here. So this here would be smoother than here because here the edges are closer together. You're gonna get some weird pinching in areas yeah. and you, you really want a consistent result when doing this. So one solution is to sort of you plan ahead and say that, well, this cylinder on the outside is gonna be a slightly bigger radius than my actual cylinder. Mm. So you could have your, your, let's say you had your real cylinder in here, for example. Um, what you could do then is just either take these, uh, these faces here, and then you could just extrude them in. Oh, let's see if we can get a slightly smaller one, something like that, or like that. So now you would have supporting edges already in place, right? So once you then extrude this down, there you go. Now you have supporting edges all the way around. And because you have supporting edges on either side, the smoothing is going to be pretty consistent. Nice clean geometry. Yeah. So that's a pretty that's a pretty simple way of doing it. Um, it gets a little trickier once you start adding um, inserts. Let's say so. Let's want, let's do the example where we add a cylinder with sixteen sides. So if you don't know how to do the magical adding cylinders here, uh, like this quickly, we we covered this in the Wacom pen modeling video where we just show show more basic stuff. We're skipping some of that now just because mm. we, we expect you to know how to make quick cylinders in this one. Quick cylinders. Quick cylinders. <laughs> so I'm making another cylinder here, which is now 16 um, subdivision axis. I've, I've actually never looked at that. I didn't know that was the term. For <laughs> yeah, that's the thing when you're doing modeling like this, you, you never know what any of them are. There's you just like spans and edges. You, and, just, uh, you just know what they do. <laughs> you yeah. don't necessarily know the terminology for them. So again, just to make our lives a little easier. So, you know, I'm matching up these edges here just to make my life a little easier. You could do it like this, then you would just have to move them yeah. in. So this just- Like we said, plan ahead. For the sake of expedience here. So we'll do this one. And there's, once you start getting into the, uh, into cylinders or in, inserts, which have multiple uh, edges, like a lot more edges than the one before, then you just like it's a lot more cuts. So usually you know, I'll start by framing it in. So now I know that, okay, I can cut around here. Yeah. And again, the easiest way is to, is to make your cylinder bigger than it needs to be, because then you have like this buffer of where your cuts are gonna be and where you have your supporting edges. Um, and you, you could go in and you could do sort of where you add these predefined ones like that, and that one there. That one there. So then you're like, then you're already, you know, a good ways away. Yeah, you have enough geometry now to support what's there. Yeah. You don't have to invent something. And then you can just go in again, and then you can go. So this one right here is interesting. So we have a, I don't know, that's where the, the edges are joining together. So what you can do, let me show you this. You just cut into there, and then we'll go in and fix that area. Yeah, keep yeah. it clean for now. Yeah. And we'll do one cut instead of, instead of two cuts for that region. So the nice thing about, some of the modeling tools in Maya has been for a few years now is um, that you can constrain to edges and surfaces. Mm. So when I do this kind of modeling, that's usually what I would do because I need to move this into place. So if, right now it wouldn't be a very good cylinder as it's, you know, it's a little out of whack. You can just hit the right mouse button to, to commit to the multi-cut, mm. which is quite handy. So here, what we can do now, if you go to your modeling toolkit, and go transform constraint, you can say edge slide or surface slide. So edge slide would mean that if I take this vertex, I'm constrained to going in the direction of an edge. Mm. If I do surface slide, I'm more free to just move around. At the same time, we can see I'm, I'm constrained to the surface. So this is really handy when you're doing this kind of work. Yeah, you can't just move this into into crazy spaces now. Now, but moving it, it, it is going to, going to stay in yeah. in the surface. So I really like this tool for just 
quick at getting stuff into place because then I don't have to worry about, oh, will my cylinder, you know, look correct? Because it just follows the surface. There you go. And then you can go in exactly the same as before. And then there. You can see there as well, just using marking menus like control, right mouse button for, uh, for selection menus. Uh, like you can grow and shrink your selection just super quickly. Yeah. So then, oh, just take that and extrude it down. Oh, we got to turn this off mm -hmm. and then extrude it down. Yeah. And then you would have another cut, which is bigger. So in order to come, you can see now we're running into this issue again with different sizes of or length, edge, edge lengths, right? So what I would recommend there is go in, add an extra supporting loop all the way around. Mm. You can make this as perfect or imperfect as you want. Like I said, I'm I'm a big fan of just doing things a little imperfect, not because I'm lazy, but because I think it gives it a nicer feel. It's it's a more realistic feel. Like if you tend to do everything perfectly like math-wise all the time, it obviously depends on your job. But if you're doing this kind of modeling, I like to be a little like in quotation marks sloppy with yeah. it just because um it, it tends to look a little more realistic. If you work for NASA, disregard any advice <laughs> we're giving you right now. If you do something which has to be perfect, obviously you do it. But uh, yeah. if it's more artistic and just for visual representation, which most of what you do in film and games really are. Yeah. So now you can see that this here, before, so this outside loop here now takes care of most of the weird deformation we have yeah. in terms of sizing. And now the inside, the two inside loops are a lot closer together here you can see they're a lot more consistent in terms of the edge lengths nice clean geometry so one thing you should be aware of here is when i merge these together there is a slight offset so you can see it doesn't exactly follow the surface so if you wanted this to be perfect you can go in and just adjust it a little bit yeah. just to make sure that it was on the money so if we apply a pre-made foam to this you can see that it looks pretty good there and you can see the end caps of the cylinder do not <laughs> look very good. <laughs> no, they do not look very good. So one thing, one issue you do run into is if you do this, you can see because I've added this loop around here, um, this doesn't necessarily conform to the amount of spans you would have here. To have this extra loop, ideally you would have another one run across um, so you don't end up, end up with a little bit of pinching because right here, you know, you don't have anything on either side of this. So you, you will end up with a little bit of pinching here. Yeah. That's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. You can see that you can see here on the normal. Okay. So let's just get rid of these here. Okay. So we'll do one more of these 16 cylinders just on the other side here. And we'll do this just in a dip, just in a slightly different way, just so just you have different ways of going about solving these issues. So before I added a bunch of pre-made loops in between. So this time I just want to add just the bare minimum. So these loops here. So this is a, this is another way to do it. Like so, I'm always doing cuts when I do this. So you can go in here, and then I will just I will add the cuts exactly on the cylinder where I want them to be. And there's so many ways to do hard surface, I think. There really is. Like there there are there are like a hundred different ways of doing this exact thing here. <laughs> yeah. And we're gonna have people who's like, why didn't you do it like that? Yeah. Well, there are just um, there are just a plethora of ways to do anything in 3D. There we go. So now if I select that thing, now we'll have a perfect cut for this one, for example. Yeah. Um, now what you need to keep in mind here is that obviously now you will need to add uh, loops to this one again, but this is just it's a really quick way of just getting you uh, Get the cut in place really quickly like you don't have to then make the spans first or the edges first just to make sure everything's there You can just cut it in to see Okay, well this will this work? Yeah And also if you're doing concept modeling then you can be a lot more lenient with correct topology And it's all about getting good shapes out here like if you're doing hard surface concept modeling. Yeah, then it's then it's it's all about the idea and not the clean modeling. Yeah, it's actually interesting when you get um, the, the the concept models for from like for hard surface stuff. It's it's a mess. Unless they're from Vitalik Perpolo, oh, yeah. then they are the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Go. So 
now we have that. So exactly the same thing here as we've done the other places. Go in and you can either, um, like again, I would add a supporting loop. So here, so it, actually to show how to combat this thing we had over here, what you can do is let's add some loops here. Yeah, you should probably add them, the, the, those there anyway because you have an end gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding it to the base of this one. So the loop supports this one. Yeah. Before, you know, I added it in here, then we end up with a little bit of pinching. Do this. Yeah, so we've been talking about this in our videos before that n-gons and triangles and all that might not necessarily be bad. But if you have a curved surface, you definitely don't want an n-gon on the curved surface. No. They can be in they can be in areas which you aren't going to see, you aren't going to deform if you really have to. Yeah. Okay. So, there we go. The spacing isn't optimal for this, but that's totally fine. Uh, that's a triangle. Right there. But aren't they the worst? <laughs> yeah, well, probably for this, it, it's actually pretty bad, actually. Yeah. So you probably you probably do something like that instead. Yeah. And then you'd have a loop around. Then you would have the loop around like this. And then you can see that it actually follows the surface very nicely instead yeah. of um, instead of this here, where we end up with a little bit of pinching because essentially we've added loops here without continuing them whereas over here they sort of they actually follow the surface now and then we can go in and space these ones out oh. surface constraint yeah. is off i always <laughs> forget that one there you go now this side over here is going to look great. So don't look at the other side. <laughs> we'll just we'll ignore the other side for now. Um, but then you can see this surface here is starting to look pretty good. So I think those are some different ways that you can make quick inserts, mm. quick quick inserts into cylinders. And if you're doing hard surface, I would really recommend plan your stuff, plan ahead when you're doing it. Think about how many times you can work with sort of the power of two within your within your cylinders, yeah. 8, 16, 32s. Um, that makes your life a lot easier. What also helps here is, is definitely like getting base geometry in there. Like if you're doing cylinders, you've got to insert a sphere into something or whatever it might be. Model the thing. Put the cylinder in where you want it to be and use it as a basis yeah. for it. It's, it's going to just make your life so much easier. Yeah. So yeah, really hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, hard surface video. Let mm. us know if you have any suggestions for shapes you want to see. Uh, and we can see if that's something we can do. No promises, but uh, sure. we're yep. op open for ideas for more hard surface videos. Mm. So yeah, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to leave a comment, like and subscribe. Thank you guys.